Hi, it's Tharald here, and today we are starting with a new Let's Play series where we're going to still be playing Mount and Blade. However, this time we are going to be doing the Gecko Kujo mod, or, well, basically the Sengoku Jedi era samurai mod. So here I'm just starting out. I'm going to be aiming to become a vassal of the Takeda family. So I am just here becoming a um, samurai retainer for the Lord Takata, obviously given the year and everything, anybody who maybe knows a little bit about the actual sort of Sengoku Jedi period, obviously will likely know that he is Takeda Shinjen, in as his actual proper name. Very, very interesting character here that we'll be working for. So we are just going to be looking at playing this to try and actually, you know, see how far we can get. Hopefully, you know, we can maybe raise Takeda up to being the Shogun and become hopefully one of his vassals. So here we are just, you know, getting everything so set up in the first battle here. We obviously do have some decent armor because obviously our father, we did choose to have him as a G Samurai. It is a case that we basically, we do actually start as being able to become a Samurai in his army rather than having to be an Ashigaru and start off as like a villager with absolutely nothing basically. So here, obviously we are just going to get into our first battle, hopefully leading, helping Takata Shinjen to quite an easy victory. Obviously Takata Shinjen, anybody who does know about him, obviously is one of the main sort of daimyos of the area. He was kind of famous for establishing the Japanese cavalry charge and the Takata family were very much known for having some of the best cavalry in Japan in the era. Obviously that was mitigated somewhat with obviously Oda Nobunaga when he developed his techniques to fight against it but I might sort of mention a little bit about sort of the history and things like that obviously as we're going obviously I'd have to say I know more than a little bit about it there and so here though getting back to this game though we have obviously managed to take these down pretty quickly we are going to obviously be focusing on the katana I mean if you're going to play in the actual Sengoku Jedi as a samurai, why would you not want to be focusing on using a katana? It would just seem a bit, a little bit mad. Possibly Naganata instead, but that would maybe be down the road. I am obviously as well going to be sort of following in the footsteps of obviously traditional samurai, and I am actually going to be working as sorry, working at aiming to become sort of a mounted archer, which is obviously where they pretty much originated from. So here we're obviously just getting into sort of a decent sort of place here. We are hopefully going to be looking at being able to move up and become sort of a full retainer and everything like that there. So hopefully that will go reasonably well. Obviously we are in a decent sized army and we are going to go into the town where basically we are going to join a tournament. So we are going to basically aim to spend all of our money on this and hopefully we'll see how that goes. Luckily, do quite enjoy the tons in this game. They are sort of on a lot smaller area, so hopefully we should be able to get those down reasonably easy here as tension. So this guy, obviously here is tension, so hopefully gonna sort of see how he does, and maybe, you know, one day possibly look at becoming a daimyo in our own right. Although I think I'm probably quite happy just being a vassal of Takeda Shinjen for the minute at the very least although obviously we do need to get to a bit more renown before he will obviously give us land to be able to look after for him and everything so here we are just obviously like i say after each battle we are literally putting in our money we're down to not even being able to uh, able to choose to give a hundred so if this doesn't go well we are going to be in more than a little bit of trouble as we will basically be completely and utterly broke which Obviously, not a brilliant place to be in. Obviously, though, with being uh, somebody's um, retainer, though, we will be getting sort of regular money off him. He does obviously pay for the money, so at the very least, we don't need any mon or anything like that. But obviously, if we do want to look at expanding, possibly, you know, getting like a couple of merchant things going to bring in some money and things like that, obviously, we will need to have a fair bit of money to be able to actually look at doing all of that. And so though here you see we're down there too, being able to only about 20 mon on ourselves now, given the lack of funds that we do have. And hopefully we are going to be able to take this down. It does seem like obviously we are on the one-on-one -on -one battles now, which will be very, very easy to be able to do. And so here we are down to the final 
battle and hopefully we should be able to take down this person just make sure to obviously keep our distance you know they're obviously on the other wakazashi whereas we obviously have a naginata here or a training naginata at least another weapon i do very much like and so there we go we are able to join the feast so tension is going to go and meet with some of the actual nobles and see how everything goes although admittedly this obviously this festival or this feast has only just sort of started so it is still very much a case that this one is quiet obviously if any of you do like this sort of mod if you've had got any experience of it please do be sure to let me know i'd love to hear about it in the comments below do be free feel free to leave any comments that you want obviously on your experiences with this mod if there's anything that you'd recommend there is one thing that i will be trying to do quite a bit differently with this one have played it quite a fair bit and have noticed that for some strange reason it does certainly seem like the actual money seems to be a lot different than ones that i've played in the past so the merchants in this game it seems to be a lot more erratic with the amount of money that you give in if you know you get out if you do manage to get a sort of a trading thing going there but hopefully you know we should be able to get a decent one going to be able to at least guarantee some money coming in so we can sort of start to develop ourselves a little bit further although the main focus at the minute is i'm going to stick with armor that my actual guy would get at his rank rather than trying to create my own and so here you can see we are actually besieging yoshiwara castle here with takta shinjen and so hopefully we should be able to be able to get this i believe it's from the imagawa clan i believe by the looks of things and um, just guessing based on obviously it is to the south which obviously would be the tokugawa or the imagawa and the tokugawa i know in this game are actually yellow so it's looking like it's probably going to be the case um, so here we are going to besiege this castle. And the castles I've seen in this game seem to be a little bit easier to besiege than in the base game and obviously in the Warsword Conquest game that I've been playing quite a lot of as I obviously need siege towers and ladders and things like this. Whereas this one just pretty much throws open the door and you have to sort of fight your way through the city. Although I will note that they are slightly more open sort of feeling which is quite a nice one. So you're not spending quite as much time bottlenecked I say that, although we are currently very much in a bottleneck situation. However, what will eventually happen though is they will open out and then there is sort of more regular sort of fighting in the actual basically streets of the castle, which is definitely a nice thing. It is something very similar to, you know, the castle designs from this are pretty accurate to castle designs that you would see in the Senkoko Jedi period, just basically because they couldn't really have the massive walls and things like that. Obviously, we associate with more sort of European style if I remember rightly it is basically mainly based on the fact of because they are on a line in faulting the tectonic plates that they are obviously a lot more prone to earthquakes than sort of Europe was over in Japan so obviously their castles had to basically be built also not just to withstand attackers but also to withstand regular earthquakes meant they were obviously a lot wider and a lot shorter things like that basically and that's all reason why obviously the siege towers and things like that not really something that are as needed in this game and so here you can see that we are going pretty well managing to cut through the guys and to be able to actually get a decent way into the castle we've managed to take out the first bit it is one of the designs though for these castles which is different from the european ones and is quite a nice idea is that it's more segmented so rather than obviously in the base game or in obviously the war sword conquest mod that obviously you've been playing quite a lot of where you pretty much once you've taken the main walls that's pretty much it you're you've gone from there there's only really the main courtyard if it is a particularly big army that you're fighting against obviously in this obviously you're pretty much you're fighting sort of in sort of choke points you normally have to go through sort of three maybe four sort of specific choke points as you're going through the castles and things like that particularly the bigger ones where you're obviously having to get first of all through the main gate and then you have to get through a couple of different sections past the main gate to then be able to get to the main castle then you're fighting obviously the main door of the castle again another choke point and then you're obviously having to fight up the stairs through the castle in particular larger ones so this one obviously does cause the castle to be quite a little bit different it does make them a lot more of an interesting thing so it's not just a meat grinder of two armies hitting against each other on the walls and you know regular deaths happening on either side and things like that it is a lot more flowing battlefield and things like that so yeah the battle for the 
siege of Yokiwara Castle has gone very well. We have managed to take out all of the enemy, although they only had around about 50 guys in here. So, you know, it wasn't exactly the hardest one to gain, but, you know, it's still very nice. And we have managed to be able to increase before because of it. And Takeda Shinjin has decided to promote us. There you go. We can see we have, unfortunately, was the case they did lose Yoshiwara Castle very, very quickly. Unfortunately, didn't seem to have left the troops in it for then the Imagawa to be able to come back and take it. So we are attempting to retake it again and hopefully hold on to it this time if we will be, you know, lucky. Although, obviously, we are having to defend against some actual guys on the battlefield first though. So, you can just see that the armor hasn't really changed much from the last guy that obviously we're playing as. You know, well, not the last guy, this guy that we're playing obviously in the last sort of rung along the armor. Although, at the very least, I am at least having sort of solid armor rather than obviously, as you can see, they're the Ashigaru archers to my left, who obviously only pretty much have a breastplate at the front. Obviously, if you get them from behind, they are not going to last very long, is safe to say. Yeah, obviously, we are using a spear a little bit, you know, mainly more just something to sort of do a little bit of damage when we do actually go into combat, and then we will more than likely normally aim to be switching through to our katana just to try and, you know, obviously level that up. We obviously have two in our weapon master, I believe. So we are in a pretty good place to be able to sort of develop our skills pretty quickly there. You can see our pull arms, you know, from a couple of hits are going up and we have actually managed to hit level four there as well already. Now, these battles, obviously, there is a case that because, obviously, that there aren't any shields or anything like that, you will notice that people are dying quite a bit quicker. So, you know, they can't just block and one block will sort of do all different types of defenses. We are actually having to, you know, defend and block in different directions pretty regularly, which basically does mean that our guys are going to be falling a little bit quicker, but then again, so are theirs, especially when large armies hit. Well, ironically as well, one of the good things about this actual mod is because of the nature of the modern blade, the mount and blade game, where obviously it is a case where you know, there's lots of very good sort of battle lines and things like that that you can set up. But then once the actual battle itself actually does happen, pretty much everything descends into chaos. That actually works really, really well for the actual Sengoku Jedi period, where they did mainly work under sort of like lots of mini sort of controlled skirmishes and things like that, which made up a big battle rather than our sort of concept on the sort of the Western side of, you know, fixed battle lines and things like that. They did start off with those and then descended into skirmishes with obviously very samurai splitting off, fighting in between themselves and then moving on to other little fights and things like that which quite an interesting way to do, obviously, when the actual, I believe it was the Koreans or the Chinese, I think it was the Koreans, obviously, who attacked and the tsunami, sort of heavenly waves, obviously, destroyed their army. Oh, no, Mongol, the Mongols, I believe it was, actually, who attacked. Obviously, they were completely confused by this idea of not fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but all in sort of together, basically. They were also very confused by the idea of rank and file and things like that, really. Yet. Anyway, that's sort of more law. Obviously, I know a lot about the Sengoku Jedi period. I have spent a very, very long time sort of reading up on it and things like that. So please do bear with me if it's not something you're so much interested in, although I would probably assume, obviously, if you are watching this series, it is probably something you would be a little bit interested in and you will be sure to be hearing a lot of it from me. And so here, obviously, as we are going, you can see that here that Tension has managed to sort of get a couple of guys sort of killing some guys here and, you know, the actual Takata Shinjens forces, they are doing relatively well. We have obviously moved into the Northern Order lands to try and hopefully be able to actually expand our lands here. We are pretty much decimating the Order forces here, very much a decisive victory and Shinjen proving himself as one of the great military leaders of the era, which was obviously very much the case. And so hopefully here we are just going to be sort of riding that wave and, you know, trying to actually actually prove that we are going to be just as useful for him. We'll be able to distinguish ourselves. I think one of the aims is I want to get a cavalry guy this time. I've obviously been playing a lot where I have been actually as a sort of foot soldier and things like that.
that in various people's armies and things like that in the past. This one very much going to go for playing as an actual mounted cavalry unit. And that hence why I have decided to pick up this horse here. As I do obviously have riding four, so you know I've got plenty of skills in riding and hopefully should be able to do a good bit of damage. And also as well that cavalry charge from the Tacta is always fun to get to be a part of obviously so pretty much going to leave this one here i've had a chance to actually come in and meet tension obviously and see where we're going to get everything set up we are getting a very decent bit of money so we're in a good place to start off with so thank you very much for watching hope you do enjoy the video series i will be putting more of these out and of course as always please if you do enjoy the videos and you do want to see more of them the best way to support is by subscribing so i shall see you next time here at egn